Hey guys and welcome back to another painting tutorial. This time we're doing something a little bit different. We are doing a custom Mythic Legions He-Man. Now the base body for this is a Deluxe Legion Builder Gladiator figure. So we, the idea is we're going to use green stuff. And we're going to make this basically a hybrid between He-Man, so Prince Adam, and Castle Grayskull. So... I had the idea we are going to turn the skull on the gladiator pauldron into the skull of said castle grey skull. Now to use blue stuff, blue stuff, green stuff. It's a bit sticky and tacky, but the premise is make sure you have some wet fingers. You want to pull off an equal amount of blue and yellow, I find. So make sure you grab enough, just like that. And you are going to want to mix it together in your hands. So a number of ways you can do this, you can roll it, you can... Twist it, I find a mixture of twisting and rolling, sort of like intermittently, is the best way to combine it. Um, and just make sure your hands and fingers stay wet. I find that's the easiest way to put it together. And you're just going to do this until it goes a solid green colour. So just lots of twisting, keep rolling, and eventually you'll end up with something that looks similar to this. So, once you have that made, we're going to roll it out. And I need four little teeth strands, because anyone that knows classic Castle Grey Skull nose that it has fangs almost and there's four of them two on each side so we want a small thin strip of green stuff and four of those that we're gonna just place down onto the skull to give it a look and feel of teeth so we're gonna keep rolling this out until we get a nice thin pieces just put the access wherever in case we need it for something else and now we're gonna very carefully place it on the skull sizing up how much we roughly need and how thin we want it I don't want all the teeth to be the same size. I think that's going to look very unrealistic and it's not going to match it at all. So this is tooth number one. We're going to do three more of these and then here we go. This is what it looks like. So we've got four teeth, different shapes, different sizes. We're going to need to let that harden, unfortunately. It does take a while. So in the meantime, we are going to use Goroth, Blue, Goroth Brown from Citadel. We're going to paint the back of the shins. Because the client I made this for asked to have sort of a brown leather on the back of the boots. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to cover this all in brown just nicely. Because for the armor itself, we do have another plan. Going to keep nice the edges. If only the camera would focus, but alas, we do our best. So, cover all this in brown to give that leather look. We will be adding more detailing to this. So now that we have finished our boots, we're going to use Sons of the Horus Green. Now this is going to be the base colour for our armour. This is the closest colour I could find that looked like classic Castle of Grayskull. So as always, we're going to put a medium amount on our wet palettes. We're going to cover all the armour in this, which is going to need a lot of paint. And then we're going to really water this down. Because we're going to do multiple thin layers, just to make sure we get a really nice even coverage all over. So I've always been told you want it sort of the consistency of semi-skimmed milk. Um, I don't know if that's a universal term everywhere. But to base this, I'm actually going to be using the dry brushes from Army Painter. Um, I think these brushes are the best for doing base coats, dry brushing everything. I use these for virtually every single thing I paint on my channel. So you get them in a three pack, you get three different sizes, and honestly, best things you could buy. Uh, I highly recommend them. So we're going to use this Sons of Horus Green and we're going to cover every single part of the armour. We're not going to be shy, we're going to put it everywhere. Just like that, make sure you're getting all the nooks and crannies. And yeah, we're going to probably do at least two, could be three, maybe four coats of this. Because um, we want a nice solid colour everywhere. And yeah, don't need to worry, because whatever we don't want to be green, we can just touch it with silver. Um, essentially, we're going to repaint the whole thing, whether or not we need to. So to add some depth to the armour, now Castle Grayskull is obviously made up of rocks and stuff, so we're using two shades. We have Agrax, and we have Beltan. Now to do this, we're going to use the Beltan first. We are going to put it into the grooves of the armour. This is going to give it a bit of depth. It's also going to help break down the colour of the green. So we've got our Beltan green here. We're just going to go in here, we're going to fill in all these creases, you can already see the shade working its way into those grooves. This is just going to help break down the green so it doesn't just, is one solid colour. Um, and it's just going to make it look a little bit more appealing to the eye. 
And yeah, the shade will do all the work for us. Uh, so we're going to see what this looks like first, just to see if we want to use a different colour, if we're happy with this one. So we're going to let this little bit dry and we will find out. Because if we like this, we can apply this to other areas as well. But again, the premise of this is we want to make a hybrid of Castle Greyskull and He-Man. So he's going to be wearing almost like Castle Greyskull armour. And I love the idea of this. Absolutely love the idea of this. Okay, so it has dried. And we are pretty happy with the results. So now we're going to get some more shade. And I find putting the lid is the best way to do it. You can obviously put your access onto a tissue. But I find putting it to the lid and then you can keep dipping back into it is great for getting the most out of your paint. So because we're happy with the results, we are just going to add more detail. And so we're going to go around the little grooves here. And on this side, and you see it just runs into the cracks, it just adds a nice deep colour. And then we're going to put some underneath here and on top, again just to break down some of that shading. And this will probably naturally pull it more towards the edges on this area. But then it will give us a nice little like contrast as it dissipates throughout. There we go, make sure we've got some on there. We don't too much because we don't want to completely change the colour, we just want to give it some depth. Just like that. And then we're going to get rid of any pooling. Because obviously where it pulls, the colour is going to be very, very dark and thick. And it's going to look a little unnatural. So, that is where we're doing our detailing for that. We're going to let that dry. See if we're happy with the results. Now, while that dries, we are going to do Agrax. Now, obviously, Castle Grayskull is going to have dirt. What better way? You know how much I love Agrax if you've seen any of my painting tutorials. Now, to give an unnatural look, we could just slap some Agrax all over with a flat brush. However, I think what we need to do is we're going to dab it on with the dry brush. Make it look splodgy, make it look unnatural, make it look dirty. Because he's if he's merged with Castle Grayskull, it's not going to be clean, it's not going to be fresh. That is my entire theory here. So, get that Agrax in. Get some more. You can see how much I use this. And we're not going to be shy, we're going to get it all in there. And again, we're just going to splodge it wherever we need this. We've also done this with the Beltang Green in certain places, just to give it some depth. In a, For example, places like the Pauline, there's not really much you can put a shade. If you put it on top of the skull and in the grooves, it's probably going to rewrite a lot of the colour. Um, so we've done this splodging technique here, where you just dab it. Because we just want to give it some definition, we don't want to change the colour. And again, we'll get more of this shade made. We're going to need to cover the whole armour. Get as much off as we can so we don't waste any. And again, just straight in there. Just dabbing it like that. And you'll see we're just generally adding what looks like dirt, but by the time it dries, and it dries on top of the green and the metallic, it's going to look dirty and grime. And yeah, this is a great way of making a shade just stay where it is, as opposed to wiping it on with a brush and it'll have the streaks to sort of flow down. With this, it's just a splodge, and generally I find it stays in place and gives it a much more uneven, natural look, which is what I prefer to most. Especially when it comes to high fantasy stuff, or just fantasy stuff in general. The more gritty and realistic, that's what I prefer. So that's sort of the approach I took when I was doing this for the client. And again, we're covering every green bit of armour. We're just going to let this all dry. And there we go. That is all of it once we've done these boots. And I'm really happy with how this green colour matches Castle Grayskull. Very happy with the results of that. Now, if you've seen this channel, you know I love my airbrush silver. Love it. I love the consistency. I love the colour, the vibrancy, how well it runs. So, we're going to mix this in. And we're going to just add some definition. Because I don't like just how green it is. So we're going to do the bolts in silver to give it an armour look still. And I swear by using airbrush paints, especially Vallejo airbrush paints with a brush. Um, no need to water them down. The colours are amazing. 
they flow really well. I will never go back to using Citadel Silver now that I've used this Vallejo airbrush. And I'm going to pick up some other Vallejo airbrush paints to see if it's uh, the gold and stuff are better. But again, we're going to do the little rivets here. You can see we got some green onto the brown, which isn't a problem because we are going to re-go over the brown. And yeah, we're just going to add a bunch of detail into the bolts. We'll do this on the gloves as well, just to help separate some stuff. And we might do the actual metal rivets that go onto the brow in silver as well. And the same on the gloves. I believe they are green currently, but just to help break up those colours a bit more, we might do them over in a nice deep silver like this. And yeah, just enjoy doing, I believe Jeremy Durrell says, just enjoy doing the dots. Like, start with the dots. Um, it's an easy way to get into customising figures. Get a nice hardened brush like this, and it's very hard to mess it up. Very, very hard. And it does look awesome. Like, just a tiny little bit of paint can completely give some new depth and character to a figure. So there you go, we hit that these little rivets here. It's hard to hold these little bits without getting paint all over yourself. But we are getting there. And there we go. It was at this point in the painting process I was getting very, very excited to put this together. And yeah, we're going to do the feet there as well. Okay, so as you can see, we went through on here and we added some silver to the bolts on the top. Again, just to help break up the green a bit. Did the same all over here. So any dots on the builder we have just covered with a silver. Um, super easy. Now we're just going to go around. We're going to do some finishing touches. So we're going to cover any patchy green bits like that. Just to give the figure a nice base everywhere. Now for this we're not using our trusty dry brush. I think that does change though. And you can see we're just coating it one more time. Because even though it's going to be on the back of the figure. I want everywhere to be solidified and I want everywhere to be cohesive. Um, I don't want to take any shortcuts, especially because this isn't my figure. This is the first custom I've done for someone else with a full repaint. Um, so I want it to be some of my best one. And yeah, as you can see, we gave up trying to use the brush and we're just going in with the dry brush. Hit as much as possible with a nice smooth coat. Because anything that we accidentally hit, we can go back over with silver or whatnot. So yeah, load up our brush and cover everything. Some of these bits on these figures are a little more awkward to hit than others. Um, but then that just adds to how detailed they are. Next, we need to do inside the eyes and nose. Now, Castle Grayskull obviously has black eyes and a black nose area. Um, so this we are going to help with some Agrax. I've put some black inside. But it was becoming a little bit more difficult to paint. So we're going to use a much thinner paint. We're going to use some Agrax. We're going to plop it inside. We're going to let it run everywhere. And hopefully this will work as we need it to. And cover every base inside these slots. Because the last thing I want is to have this figure. And then you look inside. And you just see white. where Or silver where the skull eyes were. I want it to have that darkness and that depth. That evil appearance. Just like that. Now it's not going to be perfect, but from certain angles you can't see all the eyes anyway. And as long as it's much darker, hopefully the shadows will do their job. And yeah, for this we're using the, I believe this is the Monster Brush. No, the Regiment Brush. This is the Regiment Brush by Army Painter. Um, this was one of my favourite brushes to use until I moved on to the Monster Brush. And now the Monster Brush and the Army Painter 3 dry brushes are my favourite brushes. I could probably get away with just using those four brushes for everything I paint. They're that good. So if you are debating about picking them up, definitely do it. Um, they're much cheaper than sit-down paints. Or sorry, sit-down brushes to do that. Now, as I was saying, we are going to cover those with silver. We made up our mind at this point. So we're going to go over, and it's just going to help break up the colour a bit more. And then once we've done this, we can finish off the leather look. Um, now, I've never painted leather before, so this should be interesting on how it's going to come out. The uh, client is a good friend of mine, so he does like to task me with some things I've never tried before. So no pressure. 
again. We're just going to hit the silver. Just here. And what I re and like I said, I really like the Vallejo airbrush colours because they are so vibrant. Um, and with how dark the green is and with the brown obviously being a darker colour, the vibrancy of the silver just helps add some depth, add some lightness to it. So we're going to do that on the other one as well. Once we make sure we put our Agrax away, because I don't know if anyone has, but spilling a tub of Citadel Shade is a absolute nightmare. One of the worst experiences, and cleanup is awful. I had someone describe it to me once as a rite of passage, which ah uh, is a passage I'd rather not have taken, but it has happened. Same with contrast paints; I've knocked them everywhere as well. That's a nightmare. Right, we're going to let those metallic rivets dry. And I'll say we're going to do the same on here as well, because these are very solid green. So I want to break these up a little bit. So we're going to hit these straps with some silver. And make them look like metal, like a metal lock to keep the gauntlet into place. And there you go. We want to cover all of it. There's one thing I really like doing. I love getting as much of like the detailing done and I love getting as close to the edges as possible. Um, I don't want to take any shortcuts and I don't want to just be like, oh, that'll do. I really enjoy pushing myself and steadying my hands a lot more. And when I first started, I could not paint these to save my life. Paint went everywhere. And then it's all about finding the right brush and just keeping your hands steady. And it works. So we're going to go back over the leather with the Gorof Brown just to touch it up. Get it in there, and we'll obviously water this down, give it a nice consistency, and get as much off our brush. There we go. We are now just mixing the water in. Make sure we've got a good consistency. So we did our base, we did that off screen, because you don't need to really repaint that. We are now mixing these two, so we have Blanco White, and that... And we're just going to scratch on a few tiny little marks as some new character before we try my plan for the leather. But this is just to help with that fraying look where the bolts meet. Um, it's going to look a little out of place at the moment. It's going to look very out of place. As I was doing this, it looked really awkward and I hated it. Hated it. It just looks like brown lines, and that's what really worried me when I was in the middle of this. Uh, hence me wiping it to sort of dumb down the colour a little bit. But the end result did come out quite well. And for my first time trying to do a leather look, I was very, very happy with the results. It's by far not the best, but it is possibly a nice, easy way of trying it if you want to also try a leather look. So what we are doing is blending these in just like this. And we know we're happy with the results. So this is a very watered down version of the paint we've just used. And we're just going to tap it into places. Like such. And like I said, this isn't the best leather look. Like you're going to find a lot of other much better leather appearances. But the idea of having that stretch leather behind the back of a muscular carve. I'm very happy with how this looks. Very, very happy. We've got that stretching in the middle. I'm, I'm ecstatic with how these came out. I'm very, very happy. If this was my own personal figure and I did a level look like that, I'd be very, very happy. Now we're going over with one last Agrax. And of course, our favourite Lamy Medium. I use this all the time. Lamy Medium is, of course, a clear paint. Very good at making a wash or a shade a lot thinner and give it a lot less vibrancy. So if you want to just give it like a very subtle darkness in areas. Mixing a Citadel shade with some Lamy Medium is the way to go. And we are just going to do one quick little strip just down. Just to give it some cohesion. Um, you'll see a lot of people will do this with dry brushing as well. They'll dry brush one colour over two or three different colours that have been like blended together. Just to give it some cohesion. That's what I'm doing here. 
So this is thin enough where it won't overwrite the colors and we'll still have the lightness in the middle popping through like it's being stretched, as you can see here. But it helps blend the colors in much better. Um, and I'm ecstatic with how this came out. Couldn't be happier. Now we are almost at the stage where we can put it together. So let's get that going. We do need to just prime it first. So Mr. Clear is my go-to. And this is the end result. You might have seen this image before. And I am over the moon with how well this came out. I'm creating a Prince Adam, He-Man merging figure and armor. I couldn't be happy with this. I could not be happier. Um, I was terrified to give this a go. But I'm so glad I did because I feel like it's come amazingly. I'm happy with the skull and the green stuff. Not my first time using green stuff, but I think I've learned from my own mistakes before that this came out well enough. So if you have enjoyed, please drop the video a like. I hope you can take something from this. And if you want to give it your own go, please do. It's not too complicated, nice and simple. And hopefully I can help you with that. If you're new and you're not subscribed, we'd like to. That'd also be amazing. And hopefully, guys, wherever you're watching, I will see you in the next action figure review or customizing video. Bye, guys.